Today we're going to talk about 21 signs that your body is low in nutrients. You know, certain people give me the comment, you don't need to take extra nutrition because you can get all of your nutrition from your diet. I will guarantee those people have never looked at the amount of nutrition coming into the body, let alone ever tested for vitamin nutrient deficiencies, because if they did, they would find out the majority of the population is extremely low in things like vitamin D, magnesium, zinc, B1, potassium, and the list goes on and on. Over 50% of the population consumes ultra processed foods, which have zero nutrition. We mainly eat for pleasure and taste and not for health. A good portion of the food in the grocery store is grown hydroponically in water with about 15 minerals. Well, we need 160 different minerals. All right, let's dive into the video starting with number one, tingling in your toes. Biggest indication for tingling in the toes is a B1 deficiency. When you think about vitamin B1, think about everything related to the nerves, okay? And the very end of the longest nerve in the body is going to be affected first, and that happens to be in your toes. And then on the bottom of the foot, eventually, or gradually, you're gonna notice more of a burning pain, and that pain can start getting very, very intense. The term for this is called peripheral neuropathy. You see this a lot in diabetics because the number one reason why someone is deficient in B1 is they're consuming too much sugar or carbs. And for some reason, it's worse at night than during the day. It could be because you're lying down and there's less circulation going on. What foods have the most B1? Believe it or not, pork, but you can also get your B1 from liver, and also all meats have B1, eggs have B1, sunflower seeds have B1. But if you have this symptom, I would recommend a very special type of B1 that is in a fat soluble form and it's called benfotimine. That specifically will penetrate the fat layer or the myelin into the tissues to help heal it. All right, number two is cracks in the corner of your mouth. I used to have this. This is a vitamin B2 deficiency. You can get B2 from eating liver, red meat, or eggs. All right, number three, thinning of the hair. This is usually a biotin deficiency. Biotin is another B vitamin, it's B7. Without B7, you can't make keratin, the protein that's involved in making hair. So it's gonna be thinner, it's going to be brittle, it's going to break, you're gonna have split ends. Biotin is not just for the hair, it's for the nails, it's for your skin as well. You can get biotin from eggs, nuts, seeds, organ meats, and even dairy. Number four, premature graying of your hair. Like right here or right here, you can see that. Premature graying at an earlier age suspect a deficiency of another B vitamin, B9, which is folate. It really helps you repair DNA. This is why it helps prevent cancer. But there's another specific thing that folate does, and that is supporting melanin. Melanin is the thing that gives you your pigment, your color of your hair and your skin. And so folate can help support that. And the best way to get folate is from leafy greens. All right, that's premature graying. What about mouth ulcers? This is a B12 deficiency. B12 helps protect mucous membranes. And if there's no protection, you start getting breakdown in that lining in the inside layer of your mouth, and then you get these little ulcers. But B12 does a lot. It also supports our red blood cells to prevent anemia. B12 is also involved in supporting the nervous system. Very, very important. If you're deficient in B12, you're gonna have a lot of nerve damage. It can even become to the point where it's permanent. So we wanna make sure we have enough B12. Best source of B12, red meat, liver, clams. All right, number six, deep pelvic bone pain. And when I talk about deep bone pain, I'm talking about that extends also in your lower back, your hips, and even the thighs. This is a classic vitamin D deficiency. Without vitamin D, your bones cannot mineralize. You can't pull in calcium. You can't make the bone strong. 80% of the population has a vitamin D deficiency. It's the most important vitamin because it's involved in so many different genes, like 2,500 different genes. When you take vitamin D as a maintenance dose, I highly recommend you take no less than 10,000 IUs every single day, unless you're getting sun. That is definitely not a toxic amount. But because there's so many different factors that block vitamin D, and we have so much resistance to it, we need a good amount of vitamin D3. And, and for a healthy person, that's 10,000 I use, but you probably need even more than that. 
Okay, next one is heavy menstrual bleeding. This is usually high levels of estrogen, but it can also be a deficiency in vitamin K1 because vitamin K1 is all about stopping the bleeding. Making sure you have enough vitamin K can help you. But typically vitamin K1 comes from dark leafy green vegetables. You can also get vitamin K1 from consuming liver. All right, number eight is heavy menstrual cramping. This is a magnesium deficiency. But what's really causing the cramping is the uncontrolled calcium situation. So magnesium is a remedy. You need it to help you relax, help you sleep. It's good for blood pressure, so many things. And magnesium would be in anything green, all the dark leafy green vegetables. Also, it's in pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds. All right, number nine, fibroids. This too can be a situation where you have too much estrogen. A fibroid is a benign tumor that is growing from the uterus. Vitamin D can keep it in check, but the problem is we need a lot more vitamin D than you think, especially to shrink one of these things. So you're gonna need about 20,000 to 30,000 international units every single day to be able to shrink these. So that's what I would recommend with a good amount of magnesium together with some zinc and vitamin K2. Those are cofactors. Also, make sure you're not consuming any dairy because dairy can flare those up because Dairy is a growth hormone and so is insulin. So if you're doing a lot of carbs, that also can make those grow. Take your vitamin D and watch what happens. All right, number 10 is twitch underneath the eye. It's called tetany. This is one of the first symptoms of a magnesium deficiency and I would take no less than 400 milligrams every single day. It does take a while to correct it, but Leafy greens, pumpkin seeds, like I already mentioned, will eventually correct it. Okay, number 11, heart pounding. So you hear this pounding like your pulse in your ear. Boom, 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 boom. This is a classic potassium deficiency. I at one time had this and I didn't know what it was, but it happened right after I consumed a massive amount of sugar and carbohydrates in one sitting. Because what happens when you consume refined carbs or sugar it actually pulls potassium out of certain places and locks it up into the sugar, creating a potassium deficiency. What you need is you need potassium, 4,700 milligrams. You can try to do it with salads, but you would have to have at least minimally 10 cups of salad. Very rarely does anyone do that. So what you have to do is you have to have a variety of foods and maybe sometimes a, an electrolyte powder to get what you need. Potassium is really good for blood pressure, as well as the sensation of pounding in your ear. All right, this one over here, chronic cough is a calcium deficiency. I typically do not recommend taking calcium as a supplement unless you have a symptom like this, but I think the best source of calcium is from food like dairy, but some people can't do dairy. So then I would recommend a supplement. Not too much because our body doesn't get rid of calcium too easily. So calcium lactate would be a good source for those people that need it. But if you can do dairy, like Greek yogurt or even kefir would be really good. All right, the craving for ice is an iron deficiency. And sometimes people even crave dirt or chalk. You might see this in someone who's pregnant. They need iron. The best source of iron is not from plants. It's from red meat or liver. But iron helps you carry oxygen in the blood. Our bodies do not have a way to get rid of excess iron. So don't load up on iron. Take it if you need it. All right, next one, low libido. This is a deficiency of zinc. All those hormones need zinc. And also zinc is involved in keeping your thymus gland, this the master immune gland, which is on the top of the heart, to keep it from atrophying. Shellfish, especially oysters and red meat are a good source of zinc. All right, next one is hearing loss. This is a B12 deficiency. B12 is important in supporting the nerves, especially the auditory nerve. So once B12 is deficient, that nerve can suffer and you can start having this gradual problem with high pitches and low pitch vibration. If you know of someone that's getting older, get them some good B12 and red meat are a good source of zinc. All right, next one is fibrocystic breast. This is excess estrogen because you don't have enough iodine. So really it's an iodine deficiency. What that means is they need some sea kelp or some seaweed or maybe shellfish. All right, next one is dry flaky skin, usually around the nose through here, but also in the eyebrows right through in here. 
that's a classic omega-3 fatty acid deficiency. I mean, an average person consumes like eight gallons of seed oils a year. That's crazy. That's going to create a lot of flaky skin and a lot of other issues. What that means is they need some cod liver oil or fish oil that's high quality. All right, next one is muscle weakness. This is a classic vitamin E deficiency. If you look at the top or the peak of any large mountain that a lot of people climb, you're gonna see empty bottles of vitamin E because vitamin E helps get oxygen in higher altitudes. Vitamin E also prevents atrophy of the muscle. The type of vitamin E I would recommend is called tocotrienols. Next one is fatty liver. You can develop a fatty liver from eating a lot of carbs, junk food, alcohol, but also if you're choline deficient. Where do you get choline? You can get it from either the liver or even a better source would be from egg yolks. All right, next one is cold sores. This is a lysine deficiency, but really it's a virus. But lysine will put this virus back in remission. You can get lysine from Parmesan cheese, turkey, chicken, and fish. Lysine is also good for the immune system, and it's also good to build up collagen. And then we get to the last one here called high lipids. To help regulate these high lipids, you want a good amount of niacin, which is vitamin B3. Sometimes people don't realize that cholesterol can come from sugar and refined carbs. So just by changing your diet, you can improve those profiles. Now, at this point, I think the most important thing for you to do is to know what food or foods to eat or meals that are nutrient dense to prevent all this right here. And for that information, you should check out this video right here.